If you've been following my channel for any length of time, you'll be aware I'm looking to upgrade my 10900K Intel CPU. You'll also be aware I got chatting to my friend Dan at the Flight Sim Hardware Specialist Wired to Fire. I've always been an Intel man, but to my surprise, he recommended I take a look at AMD's the 7800X3D. And he showed off some impressive results. If you missed that video, link in the notes below. Well, the proof of the pudding's in the eating, as they say. I needed to test this myself. Wired to Fire have kindly loaned me a 7800 system. And what better way to test it than in virtual reality with a headset that has the highest resolution of any consumer-facing headset right now. And in this video, I'm going to push both CPU and the headset to the max. Spoiler alert, the results really surprised me. You're watching the SimHanger channel. My name's Mark. Thank you very much for watching. And let's get started. To provide context to the upcoming tests, let's have a look at the PC specs. As expected, the CPU is water-cooled. And on inspection, I was pleased to see why to fire haven't taken any shortcuts. And it's a full 316mm cooler, as this is a high-end and high-spec PC. In addition to the 7800X3D, it comes with 32GB of memory, DDR5, and it's fast memory at 6000 MHz. Power supply is 850 Watt, even though I'll be running a 4090, as it's an AMD chip that's plenty. I would recommend a 1000 Watt or more for the equivalent Intel chip. Also pleased to see it's a full ATX3 power supply system, ready to go with 4000 series NVIDIA graphics cards. At my request, the system had the upgrade of the Asus motherboard, and it was provided with a 24GB 4090. Once again, at my request, it was not fitted. I opted to do that myself, as these are big beasts, as you know. But it's a fairly roomy case, so no problem there. 4090 fitted and booted up. All looking good, and then the odious task of installing Microsoft Flight Simulator and a bucket load of add-ons. Note the system provided did not include keyboard, mouse or monitor. If you're looking for more information on the PC specs, or you want to look at some pre-built system at a variety of different price ranges, then check out the link to Wired to Fire's website in the notes below this video. And whilst Wired to Fire only sell in the UK as far as I'm aware, by checking out these flight sim experts will give you a good feel for what sort of system you may want to build, regardless of where you choose to get it from. After install, it's always a good idea to check your system information. It's Windows 11 Home, confirms the 7800X3D chip and 32GB of memory. Now let's just check on the graphics card. We'll find that under Components and Display. And the system recognizes the GPU, so all good to go. If you haven't watched my previous video, here's a quick reminder why we're looking at the 7800X3D. The series of processors has a 3D vCache, basically more memory. So in a nutshell, it spends less time waiting for information. And as the wait cycle is reduced, well, it's quicker, especially in a gaming or simulator scenario. As mentioned earlier, our test today is in VR. But if you're interested in the performance I was getting at 1440p on the monitor, well, this is an indication. We're in the Airbus 310 from Minibuilds. We're in Alaska at Valdez, one of the handcrafted airports. And we have a flight planned today to Ted Stevens in Anchorage. What follows is just a few short excerpts from the flight. We're in TAA mode and all settings on Ultra and the 7800 combined with the RTX 4090 handled it as you would imagine with ease. By and large frame rate sat in the upper 60s to early 70s peaking at about 86 FPS and the lows somewhere a region of 46 to 52 FPS. Anyway, let's get back to VR testing. A quick look at the Pimax VR settings. I am using the Pimax VR runtime and bypassing Steam VR. I'm also using the OpenXR toolkit. Headset is running at 90Hz, but the single most important setting is make sure smart smoothing or motion reprojection is not enabled. 
This is not currently working in the crystal as far as I can ascertain and will reduce your FPS by about 40%. The render quality and foveated rendering settings in this particular case are irrelevant as these settings will be overwritten by the OpenXR toolkit and we'll be having a look at those settings in a moment. The other important point to note as I'm using an AMD compatible motherboard with the Pimax Crystal, if it has integrated AMD graphics, make sure you disable this in the BIOS. If you don't, you're going to get flashing in the headset. We're on the runway, ready for departure. You're looking at the VR mirror, and you can see the FPS we're getting is around 55, 56 FPS, occasionally touching on 60. So what? It's a good performance, but we've seen it before. Well, no you haven't. This is the OpenXR Toolkit. Let's have a look at some of the settings. First of all, we'll head over to the system and note I'm not overriding the resolution. This is the Pimax Crystal at its full display resolution. Chances are every other video you've seen, well, they've turned this down by around 20% if not more. The visuals now are stunning and we're seeing the Pimax Crystal all its display glory. But there's more. I'm not using any upscaling or sharpening features. Once again, this is native display and I'm not using foveated rendering. Everything else is off or at default. Compared to my 10900K, well I'm getting about 20 extra FPS. And again for reference, here are my VR settings. In sim resolution 100% and again I'm not using DLSS or any upsampling but I'm using it in TAA mode. OK, so I've maxed out the Pimax Crystal. My VR settings are reasonably high. And I can tell you in all honesty, the display, the visuals are just stunning. The clarity is absolutely amazing. It's pretty clear right now I am on live weather. But we'll change that and find something a little more taxing once we're up to cruise. FPS currently around the 60 mark and not a lot of difference in terms of FPS for external views. Although looking at the InSim FPS counter, I remain CPU bound. It's the CPU and not the GPU holding back any further improvement in performance. But at these settings, this is the best performance in VR I've ever experienced. And bear in mind, I'm recording at the same time. If I wanted to add in DLSS, foveated rendering, well, I'll get another 10 FPS kickstart. That, quite frankly, is amazing performance in Microsoft Flight Simulator in virtual reality. The AMD Ryzen 7 7800X3D chip, well, it's a beast. And for the first time, I'm really getting to enjoy the visuals in the Pimax Crystal as they were intended to be. You're looking at the VR mirror, what I see in the headset well, it's a whole lot better than what you're seeing. Plus, this upload to YouTube is 2K, 1440p only. These early evening colours, well, they're absolutely stunning. And my frame rate, well, it hasn't changed hardly at all. Before I even started testing, I knew the 7800X3D was going to give me a better performance. But I have to be honest, I wasn't expecting this. This is ultra smooth. There's not a pause or a stutter in sight or in view. And I believe this test is a real-world test. A medium to reasonably complicated aircraft, world update scenery, handcrafted airports. So what would performance be like with a PMDG 737 for example? Well, I tested that too. And the difference in the FPS was not dramatic and weirdly enough at times was actually better than the Airbus 310 from Inibuilds. Let's now up the ante and change scenery. Woohoo! Welcome to New York. I'm in the Air Mickey MB339. Settings are exactly as I had them before with one exception. I've turned up all the level of details to 150. I'm flying low and fast, not a stutter, not a pause, and I'm seeing incredible detail as I go. Yes, FPS has dropped down to the mid-30s, but for me it's still super, super smooth. 
And the one thing that's really noticeable for me now is how clear the details are in the middle to far distance. To AMD and the Ryzen 7 7800X3D, well I gotta say, I'm really impressed. And so should you be. And this brings me to the point where I need to answer a question I've been asked many times. Am I going for the 7800X3D? Or am I going for the 13900K? Well, if all you do or your main thing is flight simming, it's the 7800X3D can't be highly recommended enough. For me, however, I also do a lot of video rendering and editing, and it's in tasks like this where the 7800X3D does not perform as well as some of the Intel chips. So have I ruled the 7800X3D out? No, I haven't, but I've decided to wait and trial the upcoming 14900K before making a final decision. That's due out in the next two to three months, and very much looking forward to giving that the full brutal test. What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments below. I've also got to give a massive vote of thanks to Wired to Fire and to Dan for the opportunity to have this amazing experience. If you want to know what specs for Flight Sim, check out their site, link in the notes below. Thank you very much for joining me today. Stay well, look after yourselves. I'll see you all again in the very near future. And bye-bye for now.